Welcome to the Chapter 17 Workout Problem video. In this video, we're going to work out three problems. Let's go ahead and get started with problem number one. A government starts off with a total debt of $3.5 billion. In year one, the government runs a deficit of $400 million. So we're, go we're, go we're going to add to our 3.5 billion. Here's what our 3.5 billion looks like, right, in numbers. We're gonna make it uh, a positive number in this case, right? We're calculating the debt in this case. So we're gonna say the debt is, is a number, right, that we're in, and so relative to that number, we're gonna have, uh, if we're going out of debt, we'll make that a, a negative number. So just so you know, the way we're going with our numbers here. So we've got our total debt there, 3.5 billion. Year one, we're gonna add to that debt, right? So the deficit's gonna add to the debt. In year two, we're gonna go ahead and add to the debt again with another billion dollar deficit. Deficits are an, an annual one year circumstance, right? Total debt is cumulative. And then in year three, we have a surplus, right? Again, surplus is gonna be what happened just for that year and that's going to actually take away from our debt. So it's gonna subtract our debt, which gives us in total a $4.7 billion debt. Now for problem two. If a government runs a budget deficit of $10 billion each year for 10 years, it looks like this, right? Here's our budget deficit, $10 billion at the top for 10 years in the middle there, multiplied by, right? And that's, we're gonna multiply it by the years. And that gives us $100 billion in total debt. Then uh, we're gonna have a surplus of a billion dollars for, for five years. That's what that looks like. So here we are, we're reducing the debt by a billion dollars a year for five years. That's cumulative $5 billion surplus over those five years. Then a balanced budget for another 10 years, well, that doesn't do anything for us, right? Zero deficit, zero surplus, it's just gonna be zero. Then in the end, we're going to go ahead and put all this together. So we have our $100 billion deficit or debt accumulated from our years of deficit. We have our $5 billion surplus netted out. That's going to be $95 billion worth of debt. Let's move on to problem number three, fiscal policy. So in this problem, we're supposed to do a couple of things. We're supposed to first specify whether expansionary or contractionary fiscal policy would seem to be the most appropriate in response to each of the situations that we have below. And then we're also supposed, supposed to, we're supposed to sketch a graph or a diagram using aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves to illustrate how our policy would play out, how it would look. So we'll go ahead and start with whether expansionary or contractionary is gonna work for each of these. A recession, so we're, we're in a recession. So we need to get the economy going. That is going to be expansionary fiscal policy. Okay? One way to think about expansionary fiscal policy is typically the government is going to tax less than it's going to spend. That's expansionary. So it's gonna introduce a lot of spending, it's gonna run deficit, and it's gonna tax a little less. Everybody holds under their money, and we create demand in the market. B, a stock market collapse that hurts consumer and business confidence. So business and consumer confidence is going to impact demand. So what we need to get we what we need to do is we need to get demand going again, and to do that we need an expansionary fiscal policy. C, extremely rapid growth of exports. So exports is one of our inputs into our total output, right, our GDP. So what we're gonna see here is we're going to see a, a time of uh, inflationary pressure. So what we need here is we need uh, maybe some contractionary policy to help us control inflation in the economy, and that is the right fiscal policy to use in this case. So D, rising inflation. Again, inflation is going up for whatever reason, right? Typically, in our modeling with the aggregate supply and aggregate demand, we uh, rising inflation usually happens as our economy uh, hits full employment and beyond, right? So we're, as we go up to that point, then we're gonna have rising inflationary pressures. So in order to fix that, we need to have some contractionary policy to kind of pull us back and, 
and keep us keep the uh, economy from overheating in a way. E, a rise in the natural rate of unemployment. Well, the natural rate of unemployment rises and falls independent upon the business cycles of the economy. Whether our economy is in a recession or whether it's in an expansionary time, right, where it's growing, it doesn't matter. Natural rate of employment is not affected by fiscal policy. We could as the natural rate of unemployment increases, we could use some expansionary uh, fiscal policy to help out, but really, there is really no fiscal policy that's gonna fix this. Possibly some other regulations that help us with structural and frictional unemployment, not cyclical. Cyclical unemployment is not within the natural rate of unemployment, and therefore we can't fix it with, necessarily fix it with fiscal policy. Let's go on to F, a rise in oil prices. That's definitely going to put a damper on the economy. Uh, the reason it is, and it will draw this out here, is it actually is going to be shifting aggregate supply. And so we need to actually do some expansionary fiscal policy to counteract the shift in aggregate supply or the decrease in aggregate supply, which will uh, help the economy out. So let's go ahead and map a couple of these things out. So first, we have a recession. Okay, so here is aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply. In our case of a recession, we're going to be looking at uh, expansionary fiscal policy, which is going to, the idea with the expansionary fiscal policy is we want to shift our aggregate demand to the right. So this is what we're gonna do. That's what the impact is gonna be. And really the recession here in this case, we, we don't have long run aggregate supply or our potential GDP mapped out here, but ideally, right? So here's equilibrium here. Uh, at this point, as we have aggregate demand and short run aggregate supply, our potential GDP is gonna be far to the right, right? Somewhere in here, okay? So this is long run aggregate supply or potential GDP. And in order to get us closer to full employment and to get the economy going, we're going to be shifting our aggregate demand this way, right, to the right, which is going to increase our GDP, right? So that's gonna be an increase in GDP from this point right here to this point, right? That increases GDP. And then our price also uh, our price level will have an increase. So we're, we are gonna increase in the price level. Typically when our when equilibrium is well to the left of our long run aggregate supply or potential GDP, that inflationary pressure is minimal or smaller, right? So it's something maybe we don't have to worry about as much as we need to worry about uh, getting growth happening in the economy and getting our aggregate demand to shift Okay, so that's all aggregate. This is all of our expansionary models, right? So when we look at, for example, A here, that's what's gonna happen. When we look at a B, this is our expansionary. Now let's look at a model where we are gonna use contractionary fiscal policy. Okay, so contractionary fiscal policy, right? So we have our equilibrium here, right? This is our original equilibrium. And really at this point, we are operating, for, for many cases, we're gonna be operating here where maybe our long run aggregate supply is going to be to the left. And so what we're, we're gonna wanna do here at this point, we're, we're experiencing relatively high inflationary pressures and we're going to want to contract the economy. And so as we do this, we're shifting aggregate demand this direction, we're gonna be uh, pulling some of the spending out, right? The government's not gonna spend as much as they're taxing. We're gonna tax more. We're gonna tax more to get some money out of the pockets of the people as well that are, that are spending in the economy. So everything's gonna shift aggregate demand wise to the left, which will hopefully bring us back to right here. It'll bring us back to potential GDP. And what it's gonna, ha what's gonna happen is it's going to reduce uh, real GDP, right? And but it's also going to have an impact on on price, right? So ideally, it's going to hopefully keep down the inflationary pressures on the price level there. So both of the so for this, this is 
relative to our contractionary policies here. So contractionary policy, both of these. F is a little different. So F is gonna be a little different. Let's take a look at that. So the first thing in F that's gonna happen is input prices are going to increase. Now what that does to our model is doesn't affect aggregate demand. What it does affect is our supply. Our producers, the suppliers in the market are gonna say, hey, you know what? Everything costs more to make now and therefore our aggregate supply will shift to the left. It's gonna decrease, okay? Which is gonna give us, it's gonna move us here from our equilibrium O. It's gonna shift us up here to, uh, we'll call this equilibrium two, uh, one, right? So that's gonna be our first shift. And that's really the increase in input costs from uh, increasing like gasoline prices. Other input costs could also cause this, uh, if it's an input cost that impacts aggregate, uh, the aggregate supply uh, across the entire economy, uh, it's gonna have this impact. Okay, so now what we wanna do with our fiscal policy is we're gonna say, okay, let's go ahead. Now we're moving the wrong direction, right? So let's say, for example, we were at potential GDP. Let's say that, let's say that potential GDP was right here. So here's potential GDP, GDP. So that's where we were at. That's where we wanted to be, but we went the wrong direction, right? So we, we uh, are not at potential GDP. We need to try to shift ourselves back to the right. In order to do that, we need to have some expansionary fiscal policy take place, which is gonna shift our aggregate demand this direction, okay? So, that, so now we're gonna have our aggregate demand look like this, come through here. This is our new aggregate demand. So we'll call it A, D1, uh, right? This is ADO, this was aggregate supply one. This is now short run aggregate supply two. Okay, now we're shifting from E1, right? We were right here at E1 after our input costs uh, prices went up. And now we're gonna shift back this direction. So here's our new equilibrium, we'll call this E3. Okay, so here's our new equi equilibrium here. So in fact, what we're doing is there is no there is no change in real GDP after this whole cycle takes place. But what there is, is there is an increase in price level, right? We're going from this original equilibrium O to this equilibrium three. So our price increase is quite high and that, that typically is a, a normal impact when input prices go up, especially an input like gasoline that affects the entire economy. Hopefully this helps. Have a good day.